everyone, welcome to the Poch here, and it's our time for another episode of Fata Morgana. So, we're going into the next episode of the third door. So, let's go to the times of innovation and where the whitehead girl is apparently wife to some like investor that is not so cool. And also, we're going to learn more about Maria. Is seemingly the only ally that she has in um, this house, so hopefully everything will be fine. So, yeah, let's just go and let's see how the story will go. And the awesome music is back, and then that's it. Thank you, Maria, you're always such a big help. Oh no no no, no need to thank me. I just did what uh, any good maid should do. No one else is in this room, you know? Oh right, then I can drop the act. Okay, man, I just can't get used to talking all stuffy. Okay, what? <laughs> I'm out there doing my best, but I had maid still spouting stuff like... Your manner of speaking is improper for a servant. Every single time we meet. Okay. So they are ve have very friendly relationship. I like it. This is cool. I enjoy it. This is cool. Yes, come on. Just show it with you. You damn creep. <laughs> no, no. He doesn't speak of her like that. Sorry, sorry. Sleep long. She just kind of gives me willies, you know? Speaking of, you drop the stuff in that too, madame. Kinda awkward if only one of us is acting casual, you know? Okay? This is normal for me. Okay. If I attempt to talk like that, I would freeze up out of nervousness. This is my casual. Uh, fair enough. Guess this will happen when you are ri riced well. I like it though. <laughs> Very regal feel about you. I don't think my upbringing is the only factor. Uh, uh, but you know, upbringing is important. Worth a, uh, a, a whole lot more than money, I'd say. I suppose. Thank you, Maria. You're always so compassionate. You betcha. Don't call me a Virgin Mary for nothing. I practically bleed compassion. Okay. <laughs> ah, you know, that might be true. <laughs> Very well could be reincarnation of the mother of God. No, 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 no. He was supposed to laugh at that. It's just embarrassing if you take it seriously. I can't get over the soundtrack. It's distracting me. This is just so good. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by music. Alone in the white hair girl room, Mari was acting much more friendly and relaxed as they conversed, as opposed to her nonsense attitude in the hallway. The two women were, as you can see, quite close. Yep. They had crossed over the wall separating master from servant and built a bond of friendship. And at some point, they had begun to speak frankly with one another when no one else was around. Mario was, uh, was the only person in the mansion around uh, whom the white her girl felt comfortable being open. I imagine she very much enjoyed these moments of conversation. Yeah, I bet. You wish to know who the ma head maid was? My, my. Was it you? Are you sure you want to ask me that, master? Yeah. No question better left unasked. For your own good. Okay. That was weird. I have to say, madame, you have the prettiest fingers. Mine are all rough and dry and nasty. You think so? I haven't the, the slightest bit of muscle. They're about as frail as the dead branches. Oh, so who needs beefy meats anyways? I, I still think healthy looking hands like yours are far more attractive. What? 
do you like about these things? Women all over the world dream of having hands like yours. Slender, feminine, and perfectly cared for. I don't know, just looking at them lights a fire in my loins. Makes me wanna lick every last one of them. Okay. Actually, can I lick them? Can I run my tongue up down and uh, all 10 of those sweet little di digits? Come on, can I? Let's just say, what is happening? <laughs> Stop it, Mario, seriously. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> oh, Mario. Alright. How did those tea leaves turn out, madame? The ones you imported? All the maids just adore it. They can't get enough of that aroma. I'd sure uh, like to get a taste of it. If you uh, end up with extra, you think you could spare a sip for me? <laughs> oh, uh, that was... Uh, yeah, what was in the cups I dropped? What? Really? Well, ain't that crying shame. And Jackpo will have any of it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that was the, this. Why does that man have to such a stick up at his ass? You went through all the trouble of making it for him, and he was busy. Of course, she's like protecting him. That's her behavior. Like, that's what I expected from her. It's not his fault. Busy? You mean playing billiards, drinking bourbon, and puffing down cigar? It may look like it to us, I've just my small talk, but I'm certain their meetings are some importance to their businesses. It still doesn't justify him. It was imprudent of me to try to step into the man's world. It's just not right. I mean, you're his wife. Why shouldn't you be allowed into this room? It doesn't bother me. It clearly does. You don't have to pretend. Yeah. Here's an idea. How would you like to have some tea now? We also have some orange marmalade, which you like so much. And add a scoop of that and a tray of cookies and we have a perfect tea time. We are singing the Siren song, madame. But you really should be doing that with him. He would not have tea. Yeah. I suspect he doesn't like it. Yeah, I don't like this guy. I don't want to go to wa I don't want it to go to waste, so... Madame, I know it's none of my business and I have no place at all saying this, but... It's not impossible for a woman to file a divorce these days. Yeah. Do that. You don't have to sit down and take it. Not one bit. You're pretty, well educated, and still young. There's hope, even if you would leave him. There are plenty of other men out there. You aren't obligated to stay with that arrogant jerk. You're just very busy right now. Oh my god. I know this is her, like, motive and, like, just like her. Attitude, but god damn it, this, th th this is getting actually kind of annoying. Especially when I see a guy like this. And she's like, no, no, it's fine, it's like very busy and stuff. Does she have like Stockholm Syndrome or something? There you go again. It was a time when he was kind. Eh? Yeah. It wasn't like this when we first met. Back then he was a little awkward, but a kind man. Him? A kind man? Yes, believe it or not. That was indeed a time. Say, Maria, would you mind giving me a little bit more of your, your time? I'll make some tea and we can talk. Okay, some backstory time. Alright. If you are telling me about when Jack Paul was decent, I'm all, re all ears. Indeed. Okay, let's see. Let's see the time. What happened that he changed then? Whoa. Wow, this background. 
She's so beautiful. Wow. As I'm sure you're aware, our parents arranged our marriage. See? What I said in the previous episode, probably arranged marriage. See? I've been on point. Before I immigrated to this country to be married, I lived in a misty island nation. Okay? Who are you then? Like, from which country? So you are not from Europe. From what country do you live on? Misty Island. Island with a lot of mist, maybe? I don't know any of islands like this. I don't know. She can be like... I mean, there's like kind of like a lot of island rights. There's Iceland. There's uh, Great Britain. There's Japan. Uh, Madagascar. I guess. Like, there's a lot of things. From where she is, though, I cannot tell. It's very unusual. Hmm. Portraits of my ancestors hung in the house where I lived. Okay, so she's been actually rich. I remember as a child when sick in fear at the sight of them staring down at me. So this is clearly not the same white-haired girl. Because the first one, like, this is not like some time travel, like, stuff, weird things. Because first girl was like uh, the daughter of the painter and there's no way like they had like house of like with portraits of like ancestors and stuff, right? Then we had the beast. She looked kinda fancy and she was kinda lost. Maybe? It might be like the story of the Sandans, but we are going into like... We are skipping like one generation and going into another one, basically. Maybe. Because otherwise, if this is like the bloodline of her, then it doesn't make sense if this is just like single generation. Because it's like 100 or 200 years afar from, uh, from themselves. So it's like two or three generations each door, basically, passing by of, uh, of her family. I think. I think that that's what's happening. Probably. We'll see, probably, in the future. My mother and father were constantly telling me to show them respect, as it was their hard work that kept our bloodline alive and well. However, they were fighting an uphill battle to do the same. It would have been clear to anyone reasonable perceptive that our house was coming tumbling down. Valuable, valuable, valuable furniture and paintings slowly disappeared and eventually the portraits were gone too. As our house collapsed, so too did my parents have deteriorate, robbing us of any source of income. And though I was educated, I lacked the skills necessary to obtain work. Just as we were about to run out of money and options, my parents received Jack Frost's parents' marriage proposition. Both our families stood to benefit from that arrangement. I had social status and he had wealth. We each had what the other lacked. Okay, so she's like in higher status than him. So she's like a noble, like actual noble, nobility. One needs more than money to make it uh, in the world. Without at least a semi-reputable name attached to you, you are liable to get enough out uh, of most social gatherings. I first met Jack here in this country. We didn't even know what the other looked like until our wedding day. To be quite honest, I was scared to death at first. I was so nervous. What kind of man uh, would he be? Was I 
we went to some middle aged stranger. We're not marrying because we had fallen in love like a normal couple. I knew I was in no position to be concerned with such things. But when I thought about our future, I shook with fear. But the man I saw through my veil at the wedding was remarkable. He was young, had strong, masculine eyes, and at the same time, he too appeared nervous. <clears throat> he was shaking so much, now even more than me. Saying that, the priest gave an impish little smirk, and he asked Jackpot if he wove his eternal love to me. I counted myself among the happy. And I still do. For in that moment I experienced true love. He wanted to hear about when he was kind to me. Well, after the wedding, we were given a week to ourselves. I suppose you could call it a honeymoon. So we didn't take a trip overseas, or even go very far at all. He looked at me with the uncertainty he has asked. Where would you like to go? Huh. I beg your pardon? That's, uh, this is uh, what this week is for, right? I consider granting your request, so tell me where you want to go. I, uh, just all so sudden. Ah, nothing? Well, this whole engagement was put out at the moment. Normally, you would have planned a trip in advice. But unfortunately, our purpose is served so long as we act the pot. You must be disappointed that you have to plan your honeymoon as uh, it's happening. No, I... Uh, what? Speak clearly. I don't like it when people don't speak their mind. I'm sorry, but I am happy. Even if this is political marriage. Well, you're quite a positive thinker. Your parents say something to make you think that way? I... Uh... Well, either way, if you're so glad to be in this arrangement, then hurry up and decide on the destination. Though there's a limit to how far we can go. If you want to take a trip, I'll consider it. What? Is something funny? Okay, he's... Okay, this is being him nice. Okay. Okay. It just seemed comical to me that our honeymoon had begun and we're only now deciding where we want to go. Not in a bad way though. I'm glad our parents didn't arrange everything for us. Perhaps you have heard, but I'm quite sensitive to sunlight and not in the best health. So it would be rather trying so it would be rather tying trying for me to spend a full week out of the house. We couldn't go a tri on a trip, but if it's not too much trouble, speak up. Could you show me around the town? I'm new to this country and unfamiliar with its customs. And I'm rather afraid to go wandering about on my own. Show you around. Yes. Would that be possible? Huh. On a rare bit of time off, you ask me to show you around town. That's not really the most exciting idea you have. I, I'm sorry. If uh, to somewhere you would like to go, I'm fine with that. I will accompany you anywhere. As if I could drag someone who just professed to be sickly all over the country. My god, I was all interested in a trip. Hello? What are you doing? Get ready. Now. I beg your pardon? Didn't you want to see the town? You... You will show me around? You are the one who asked. Okay. This is actually him being nice on his own, like, way, I guess. Like, he's still acting like a jerk, but he's still, like... Actually caring at that stage. You know what I mean? Like, on his own, he's actually being nice here, if you think about this. He's still kind of annoying, but he's, like, trying, I guess. 
is not that bad at that point. Not like I have another option, so yeah, let's, I will show you around. Thank you. Don't just stand there, you do that. Get a move. Oh, one moment, wait for him, please. He hardly clim climbed into the carriage he called for. A look of a frustrated displeasure on his face. And then as he, he had forgotten about me until that moment, he returned, grabbed me by the arm and led me to the carriage. In retrospect, I realized that he was not being well, very gentlemanly. Yeah, pretty much. He's like, still kind of an asshole. But I was pleased that he was making an attempt to interact with me at all. Yep, that's why I said like, he was trying and he was not that entirely ultra bad as he is right now. Because he at least tried back in the day. But yeah. You can see that this is going to be toxic. As the carriage trotted down the streets, I saw so many new things. I spent most of my time coped up. I spent. I had spent most of my time coped up inside at home. That was like stepping into an entirely new world. And add to the rapid industrial ad uh, advancements currently taking place, I saw men shouting back and forth as they smacked newspaper articles with the backs of their hands. I saw cornered cafes crowd of cigar smoking men on break from work. It was like the hustle and bustle of a festival, but every festival has its underside. I also saw overworked men. Looking like they were on the verge of the collapse, drinking water from the spigot on the side of the road. By the way, of contrast, I wore fine clothing and had a carriage at my disposal. I imagine every day was a struggle for them just to remain afloat. Hmm. This is... May oh no no the, yeah this is white hood girl yeah yeah this is her story sorry my bad had I not married the man I had I too might have found myself on the streets in a similar situation but it was not a relief that spread through my um, breast at the sight of them it was pangs of guilt it felt to me like a life of opulence was wrong sinful. I broke my it broke my heart to know that I was living so much better than them. Jack postorted disapprovingly at me, seemingly reading my mind, and then said The poor man who envies, envies the rich covets his wealth and finds ambition to make the same for himself. And the rich man who pities the poor, thinking it his duty to give them offerings of philanthropy. To me the latter is far more nefarious. Excessive charity will ruin a man, make him come to expect handouts. And then there are those with the wrong idea of pity, who let themselves fall down to the same place, mistakenly believing it will somehow make the poor feel better. What a joke. You are going to do anything for them, you might as well encourage them to climb upward. Okay, there's me actually like spitting spitting some truths actually right now. Okay, this is like actually some s some sentences that makes actual sense. Okay, does if you just give someone like everything, yeah, they will like do nothing with this. In most cases, you should like give a like carrot on the stick, basically, and make people just try to move because otherwise nothing will change really sport and economic growth and the flow of capital doesn't that sound like a better option i say nothing simply smiling and g giving an ambition is not yet the point my sympathy and guilt meant nothing to people actually experienced hardship if anything guilty of my if if feeling guilty of my own fortune, I acted I acted upon that pity in the way he had described, it would accomplish little more than self-satisfaction. 
he seems to have seen straight through to me, to my very core. And those men who had built his own fortune through investment, which I imagine required him to be rather astute. astute. But doesn't a world where everyone is constantly trying to climb higher and higher sound rather exhausting? I personally would prefer to be in position where I could watch, if only from a distance, as other climbed. But obviously, I could not say as much to him. Sometime later, the carriage came to a stop in front of a shop. As I looked at the building, perplexedly, perplexedly, he gestured to the door with his chin, signaling for me to get out. Lost and confused, I stepped down from the carriage, and before me sped a showcase behind a large glass window. However, lined up in case were no precious metals or expensive clothing of machines. At first I had no idea what kind of devices they were. Okay. Oh! Have you never had a photo taken before? No, I had a portrait painted though. Yeah. Are these machines for taking photographs? A portrait, huh? I am not surprised. I did not mean to boost. Go on, get in. Uh, please wait, wait for me. Yeah, still an asshole. The owner came out to greet us with a wide smile as we entered the shop. Well, if this is. If this ain't the strangest thing I've seen all day, you bring a lady with a real, real looker at that. What on earth you catch this pretty little thing? She's my wife. Huh? Well, I beg your pardon. I will be. I'll be a monkey uncle. Just goes to show you will never know where the cars may fall. Make it sound like my yeah, like my getting married is some kind of a miracle, kind of. <laughs> oh, so you just want to choose money over love, sir? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, pardon me. This isn't appropriate to say in front of your wife. Uh, do you often come to the shop? On occasion, I need some things here from time to time. Let's see. There you go, smirking again. What's so funny? We're going to have a photo taken, yes? I'm so nervous and excited, I've never had one before. And to have it taken side by side with you. What are you talking about? Yeah, like, god fucking damn it. Like, okay, jackpot, like, I swear. God damn it. Pardon? Who said we're getting our pictures taken? I, I hate this guy. <laughs> god damn it. And side by side, please. Okay, okay. How did you? How is he like kind to you in your mind? Like, I cannot comprehend this. Like, what the actual fuck? Just sending shivers on my spine. But, but this is a photography shop. Hey, shopkeep. The product I contacted you about is it ready? Oh yes, sit tight, that will be right out. You take a seat. There's a chair over there. What? I'm going to show you something much more exciting than sitting still and waiting in front of the camera lens. Okay? Just do as I say. Okay? I sat down in the front of the large mirror, which I presumably which I presume was normally used to check your appearance before having your picture taken. Sitting before the mirror with someone else present was quite nerve-wracking. Out of embarrassment, I dropped my gaze to my knees. But when Jack returned, I was interrupted by the curious object in his hands. Okay. What is this? I have no idea. She looks lovely on this picture. Actually, very cute. 
What is this? I have no idea what it can be. It's like a dance. It's like Per is dancing. And there's another Per that's dancing. Is it some kind of clock? Because there's like a one arrow. It looks like a clock with like very weird... It looks like a clock. I don't know. Do you know what persistence of vision is? No idea. Maybe I just don't know the English word for this. But I never heard of that. The human eye does not perceive the word 100% accurately. This is especially true for objects in motion. It remembers images for a short time. So if you put a new image in the same place, your eyes perceive is it in this emotion. Oh, is he making a movie? Is it like something that you like spin and it will make this like figures move? It's like it's, it's like very simple movie, basically. You can do this with like paper and drawings. This is actually freaking cool. Saying for yourself will be faster than explaining it. You see this uh, slit in the disc? Look through the bottom of one and into the mirror. Okay. Okay. Good, just like that. Bring your head in close. Here it goes. And behind me, he sees his finger across the top of the peculiar toy. He can make it spin gracefully. And then. They're going to dance. Yep, okay. It is a movie. I did not expect her to have animation in the <laughs> in this game. So what do you see? They're dancing. A man and woman are dancing. Sounds like you are not having any trouble seeing it. Are they dancing well? Yes, yes they are. It's the most adorable thing. What? Adorable? That's funny. I asked to have it modeled after the ballroom dance. Uh, yes, it's very elegant dance. But you see, they're small, like little dwarfs. Which I thought was kind of cute. They seem so close, going around and around without ever letting go of each other's hands. This is incredible. Why does it look like they're dancing? They were all lined up in a row a few moments ago. Godness, I just explained that to you. That's playing a trick on your eyes. What you're seeing is a lot of different pictures in a short period of time. To put it in words, you might understand better. It's an illusion. Your eyes are being fooled into thinking the image is moving. An illusion. But they are dancing. They really are. And they look like they're having a wonderful time. Are you sure it's an illusion, not something else? To me, it does not seem to be. Yeah, this is the matter of perspective. Ah, uh, this game and to me, Neko. Matter of the perspective. I cannot see it as anything but two tiny people dancing. That's how it works. Reach out your hand and try to grab them. You won't be able to. Ah, you're right. That's a shame. I... I don't think you actually would. <laughs> okay. This is the most precious thing. <laughs> they look as though they're dancing out of my palm. I was mesmerized by the strange phenomenon. Pictures were moving after all. Seal images had begun dancing before me. It was almost as if God had breathed life into them. He had called it an illusion. But I could not grasp that. This is, this is literally like... Is this like the first movie? Like, when the like cinema happened to be... Like, when was like the movies created? I don't know. I, I forget, actually. When was the first movie created? Do they have cinemas? I don't think they have cinemas yet, right? Or anything like this. So this is the first like moving picture, basically. 
It's called Intelligent, but I could not grasp that. It was such an adorable heartwarming sight. I imagined the two were of living in some other world, separate from our own. They looked so happy. I was almost certain they were all dancing in their joyous world, free from all the sorrow and loneliness and pain of this one. Eventually, the speed at which they danced began to slow as if they were resting their legs. I almost thought I could hear the sound of their feet with each step. Ah, they stopped. They can dance forever. They don't get tired. See, you're amazed. Such an incredible device exists in this world. Yeah, no movies yet. It makes me wish I had gone outside sooner. I'm sure someone from the distinguished house as yours has seen plenty of amazing things with your family. Hardly. I rarely even left the house. I'm ignorant about the ways of the world. If you had not told me, I would have probably never known about moving pictures. The illusion of moving pictures. Do you like it? Yes, of course. More than the portrait you had painted? Yes. Yes, I do. The painting was wonderful too, but... You can't seem to make up your mind. Go on, tell me. Which one do you like better? The portrait or this? Uh... I like this better. I see. You look somewhat pleased? Huh. The when it comes down to it, that's a simple trick only a child to fall for. Then I suppose that makes me a child. If it means I get to watch something as splendid as the tiny people dancing, I will happily fall for the trick. Quit describing it as two tiny people dancing. You're going to lose your head. Far, uh, your head that far up in the clouds. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I do not know how to else describe it though. It's a toy called... Fenakistoscope. Okay, let, let, let's go with that. Fenakistoscope. Even she had problems. I'm not. Okay, Jacob. Fenakis will. To go behind that. <laughs> Close enough. It was invented about 30 years ago. Okay, so it's actually been around for a while. I had the shopkeeper make one model out of the original design. Okay. The shop owner drew this? He did. A lot better than I expected, isn't he? Yes, indeed. I'm surprised he could draw something so cool. Cute. Sorry. So... That to his face and say that to his face and he will go red as a beat. What I would give to get a load of that. You should tell him the next time you would see him. <laughs> He's a sweet man. Despite how he looks, you mean. It's, it's not right to judge people based on their appearance. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't take it too seriously. The shopkeeper here loves new technology. That... Fena Fenakid's thing wheel is one such invention that caught his eye. You can trick the eye into thinking, drawings are moving. Using a sequence of photos, you can perhaps make it seem as though real people are moving too. And if it becomes possible to show those images to many people at once, these developments could broaden the options artists have to express themselves. Okay, so we have these things, but we still don't have a movies. Okay. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it now. Not drawings, but photographs? Look at this photograph. Yes, photos. By taking hundreds or perhaps thousands of photos, it will be possible to reproduce the world as we see it. This room, people walking down the streets. There's no point in recording boring everyday life though. If you're gonna leave a record of anything behind, it should be projects that enterprise the movie nations. Say for example, 
a moving a moving record of the opening ceremony of the railroad. Oh. Okay, so he wants to have like two achievements at once. He wants to invest in the railroad, uh, railroad, railroad that he's like investing right now, and he's doing this so it succeed and he can make a movie basically out of the opening ceremony. Interesting. That would be something worth watching. And then in time, it would expand beyond a mere record keeping technology and find its way into the hands of artists. Is such thing possible? You must remain still for a long time to just take a single photograph. Yeah, back in the day, you had to just like open the cliche uh, on the. Uh, and the photo camera basically and wait uh as it goes like lighten up basically it has like enough enough light to make a picture basically it's not just like click and you have you you had to like wait for like minutes basically standing still still faster than portrait but you had to stand still right now it isn't but eventually it will be and I'm not simply fantasizing, fantasizing here. Is that so? It sounds so very futuristic. Do you... What? Do you want to support people who work on that sort of thing? Is that why you are friends with the owner? It has nothing to do with my uh, to do with my wants. I merely think there's money in it. The rich star for entertainment, and artists create that entertainment. I have no interest in their pretentious self-expression. I just want their money. <laughs> What's so funny? You look like you're enjoying yourself. Honestly, it's just about the money. Just to say. Huh. This is actually a pretty cool backstory. Huh. Don't make me want to like him. I'm starting to thinking like maybe he's like taking investment into this railroad and trying to make a movie out of this for her because she liked this uh, moving people so much and she's so anticipating for this and he wants to do this for her but he doesn't feel like he wants to he kind of feels like he wants to but also he's just an asshole who wants some money really so i'm really not sure what to think about him i still will think about him as being bad basically maybe he has something like deep inside of him but yeah not buying like his good side yet All right, let's get moving. Next is dinner. So what, we are leaving already? Does that displease you? No, no, not at all. To tell you the truth, I want to spend a little more time playing with the Tanaki Squeal, but I could not uh, bring myself to say as much. Reluctantly, I approached the owner to return the wheel. Don't bother. Bring it with you. What? But... If you don't want it, that's fine too. Just make your decision quickly. You are making the driver wait. Having said that, Jack exits the shop. Alternatively, between looking at his bag and the Fanaki's wheel, debating what I wanted to do. And then, with a smile, the owner whispered to me You are allowed to keep it, really. Your husband out there had it made as a gift for you. Okay, this guy actually might have something like actually good in him. He just like you have really like stick up in his ass and like he's like really an asshole like outside but he's like kind of like softer inside but outside he's just like making like pretense and just like is like asshole to everyone uh, i don't know if i like it i can like kind of like him i guess but be less less of an asshole please just like tiny bit less for me 
a little while back, he came to my shop asking if I could make a thing. Now that about knock me out of my chair. Uh, he's a man who almost never asks for a favor. He's pretty damn brusque. And he got that tongue sharp enough to cut steel. But he's not weak to the core, I swear it. Yeah, seems like it. But please be like less, just like less of an asshole. Just like a little bit less. So please, man, be pillar of support for him. Hmm. In that moment, the Fanaki's will became a precious treasure to me. We had only just married days earlier, and yet he had commissioned it for me without even knowing what I looked like. I was filled with... it was filled. I was filled with the warm, ple pleasant elation. I agreed with the owner. Jack Poe was not a bad man. Yeah, seems like he's not entirely bad, but he's still an asshole. We cannot disagree with this. He merely had difficulty expressing himself. Hurrying back to the carriage, I gave him my deepest thanks. He glanced over to me for a moment, then turned uh, back toward the window and muttered, Yeah. <laughs> From there, we went to the restaurant for dinner. Call it the pizza. The cruise is an atrocity. It's like I'm chewing on rubber. How can you wave my country flag and not serve spaghetti? Do you have any shame at all? This is Italy? What? Okay, this is surprising. Wait, this this is actually this this actually took me off guard. What do you mean it's Italy? What do you mean it's Italy? There's no what? <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Okay, I would never expect it Italy. I literally would never expect it Italy. <laughs> What's the? <laughs> This wine is pitifully unbalanced. Far too high levels of acidity. Listen to me carefully. The house wine is uh, in the face of the restaurant. He complained about every little thing. It was a complete disaster. But curiosity enough, I was not at all put off by his behavior. When the sun set, the carriage made its way to Nerva Hill. The cool night time breeze felt wonderful on my skin. Flashed from the alcohol, and the light from the gas lamps had a comforting warmth to it. Through Jackpo had complained about the quality of the wine, once he had intoxicated himself, his mood improved visibly, obviously. It made him unexpectedly talkative, that's how alcohol works. Look out at the city. A gloomy town that shuts down at night isn't suited to expansion or growth, but this city isn't like that. You can see people walking beneath the lamps. You can hear the bustle of the locking. This is a city that still has uh, plenty of room to grow. As they ride the rise wave of the economy, many, many more people will gather here. The more people means more money in circulation. More money in circulation means the city grows. Companies are founded and more goods are brought and sold. Will it really change so drastically? It can be difficult to see what happened from the inside. The majority of people just go about their daily lives. And the next thing they know, things are different. Uh, and Wagger most don't notice the changes at all. Only those with eyes sharp enough to realize what's happening can see success. I cannot afford to overlook even the most minute change. Do you have a dream of some kind? A dream? Ah, I'm not sure if it's easy enough to attain to call a dream. Others might call it greed, or perhaps ambition. Don't laugh now. My intention is to make the world mine. The world? Yes, the world. And to do that, you need uh, neither physical strength nor kindness. But money and influence. People have no choice but to kneel before those forces. Why are you so intent on obtaining power? Because 
They want to change my country, I imagine. Don't... Jackpot, don't, don't make me actually like you. You actually make sense after you drink too much. Your country? You're aware that I like you. I am an immigrant, right? Okay, so the, so he's from the Italy. So he's from the Italy, but the, this takes place somewhere else. Okay, okay. So it's not Italy. He's from Italy. Okay. I immigrated from the island in the... Medite... I never heard of... What the hell is this? Mediterranean... What the... That was not the same island as you. Okay, similar island. Okay, one second. I need to check this. Before we go, wait. I need to like... Mediterranean... Mediterranean Sea. Okay, where the hell is this? Oh, so it is like around the Italy. Yeah. So not the same island as you. So she's like from somewhere from from this area, from the area of the Mediterranean. So he's from Italy, so she can be like from many other things around. Sicily, Sardinia... I don't know what islands been there like... Back in the days, maybe they were like named differently. Huh. Okay, so she's like from somewhere around this area. At least this one. Okay. My country is a peculiar place where candor and violence go hand in hand. As a whole, the country is on the poor side, and if nobody does anything about that, I'm one but a few of my fellow countrymen who set his sights on the new world. They're falling far behind other nations. If I success here, perhaps that will catch their attention. But if it doesn't, then my country is doomed to collapse. You have much love for your homeland. My feelings are a little more complicated than mere love. But that's nothing. But that's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Well, I'll have to remember not to get myself drunk around woman again. Forget everything I just said. It's about time we head back to the house. Alright, but... Uh, what is it? Is it alright if I provide you encouragement? As you try to attain your dream? I know my presence uh, uh, presence is more likely to be a hindrance. But I would like you. I would like I would like to be there to watch as you track forward. I suppose do as you wish. Thank you. You have my support then. Uh Darling? <laughs> That sent shiver down my spine, though not an unpleasant one. I'm glad to have you as my partner. Okay. I was without a doubt. Happy then. His smile, the things he said, the Fanaki's will he gave me, they were all undeniably real. And those memories gave me the will to wait. For the days things go back to the way they were. They allow me to believe. Okay. Okay, that was a weird... Weird outro, like, new chapter thing, song. Oh, question marks. This is something that actually happened to another maid. Okay, what happened? Who's speaking? We'll see in the next episode. Yeah, we just had the backstory, an awesome backstory. Like, Jackpo, don't make me like you. Oh my god. I'm starting to actually like this guy, but I still think like he's an asshole. He's like an asshole that I like, I think. Like, uh, this is weird. What the fuck? 
Anyway, thank you everyone for being with me, for watching this episode, and I'll see you, I guess, in the next one. Uh, so, yeah, leave up a like if you like the episode, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, you can also now become a member. It's uh, actually a thing, and you can see episodes earlier if they're actually uploaded when I record like backup videos and stuff. So, yeah, thank you everyone once again. And I will see you all in the next episode of Fata Morgana. We will continue the story of Jack... Jackpo? Jack... Jack... Jackopo. Sorry. And the Whitehead Girl. And whoever it is here. Thank you. And Fata Pocket Watch. Let's gank out.